Hello, you brilliant little marketing bees. You're tuned into episode 74 of the Marketing Buzzword Podcast. This is the Marketing Buzzword Podcast, the podcast where we dissect the world's most common marketing buzzwords. Hold on tight. We are about to fly around the beehive to see the latest buzzwords that stuck to the marketing bees. Hello and welcome to the bite-sized section of the Marketing Buzzword Project and Podcast, aptly named Bite Size Buzzword. I'm Ben Roberts and in these bite-sized snackable episodes, I'm going to help you dive deeper into what a specific marketing buzzword actually means, help you decide whether it is or isn't important for your business, and if it is actually how you can incorporate that buzzword into your marketing strategy. And this week, we're going to look at the buzzword creating a culture okay and this is something that i've seen loads and loads of articles on about you need to create this culture you need to create a culture of this of innovation of creativity of all these different things and i really want to sort of break that down a little bit today into why potentially culture is important and actually how you can create it so what is culture and why is it important to business so essentially a culture is the way in which the internal workings potentially can be viewed externally as well but the internal workings of a business how all your people interact together now this is the sort of environment and atmosphere that is eminent that emanates from your employees now this can be positive it can be negative and a lot of it is actually sort of due to um due to sort of the happiness of your employees, the empowerment that they have. Now, culture is important for a number of things. Now, the way that your employees interact with each other and and, and how they feel about the business means actually that there are a number of sort of factors. So, first thing is that actually when you have a positive culture, a culture can really help pull people in the right direct in the same direction. What that means is everyone in the business is not actually at loggerheads. It means that they're all understanding what the goals and aspirations of the business and they can all buy into that. When you have have a negative culture can persist when you don't have everyone buying into the same end goal, the same, just not everyone pulling in the same direction. So this is what you do, when you're encouraging a culture and why it's important, it helps people pull in the same direction. So actually people collaborate, people work together, people aren't trying to pull each other apart and stretch resources any further than they need to. They're actually looking at ways in which they can work together. It's motivational as well. When there is a positive culture within a business, motivations up. When motivations up, actually more people are able and willing to go above and beyond. People buy into the business. It's it it's a positive atmosphere it means actually that more work gets done and people actually want to be in work. It means you get less absenteeism, decreased turnover. You get more new ideas. People feel like they're listened to. They feel like they want to contribute something because they feel like they're getting something back from it. When people want to come to work, because they enjoy the surroundings, they enjoy the people, they enjoy what they're working on, and they feel they feel empowered. People take less days off. It's been proven a time and time again that actually, when you motivate your workforce and you create this culture of just a really positive culture in terms of people listen to, people feel valued, people feel wanted, they they stay in your business. And actually, you know what? It helps you hire as well. Not only do you not lose people, it actually makes it really easy to hire. How many Instagram or Twitter accounts do you see of of the people, just the people with inside businesses? So I was recently um, uh, speaking at a law firm in Bristol called TLT Law Firm. And they actually have a whole careers division. And that's like showing what's going on inside TLT and the lives of the employees and what they're up to because that actually helps people it helps them hire because the world of law is a really competitive world so it's trying to sort of balance up there and trying to encourage new people to come to your business and that's why culture is important to business by not, by ignoring culture and thinking actually things will just sort themselves things may sort themselves but actually if you're not helping that situation, potentially you're actually letting it go bad. 
So, some of the errors that people will sort of happen which cause a negative culture. And when there are sort of four key things that I've identified. A lack of collaboration. This is when you have departments and areas of business that are siloed off. It means they stop working together, they stop talking to each other, which ultimately means they become sort of jealous of each other. I've worked in business before where certain departments have really just become not liking of each other. And it actually becomes really hard then for them to work together and to create new stuff. So therefore, you need to have that collaboration. As soon as you break down those walls and these silos and you get people to work together, they actually generally like each other more. Yes, not everyone likes everyone, but it is so much more positive. Actually break down those silos. Dictatorship. Now, no one likes a dictator, particularly. Dictators have their be- have some pros in terms of efficiency, in terms of getting things done, but no one likes it. A balance is needed, though. You can't not be a comp- you can't not be a dictator because if you don't dictate stuff, then things ultimately may not get done to the speed or exactly how you want it to. You have to balance up. But no one likes a dictator. When someone runs around, I've made this error personally before. I can see other people making these errors now where they try and dictate exactly what they want. They try to micromanage. That is an error to culture. That doesn't help people. Number three is the lack of clarity and or honesty. When a business is seen as being dishonest or just sort of being really wishy-washy with their employees, it doesn't create a positive culture. It's, it damages culture because they don't feel like the business can trust the employees. The employees don't feel like they're being given all the information. They feel like they're being hidden, stuff being hidden from them, that they're being lied to because ultimately it affects their existence. For some of these people, it could be literally, they could be on minimum wage and actually if they lost that job, it could be a disaster. But no one wants to lose their job, so they feel like they don't know what's going on. They feel like they're being lied to. They feel like the decisions are being taken out of their own hands. And it's like someone else is better than them or more important than them. That is an incredible way that I see people making an error with their company culture. Number four, it's just generally a lack of communication. God, I'm seeing this in the moment with the hockey club that I'm chairing, that actually when people communicate early and communicate about even little things it's so much better than when people don't communicate at all when people just assume things are going to happen or just assume other people are going to know it is to assume makes an ass out of you and me when you don't when you just assume things go wrong you have to clearly communicate oh even if it's an idea what do you think of this oh i'm thinking about implementing this what do you think now most of the time the idea won't be no but actually as well you can also get some ideas to help um some more feedback to help refine your idea when people don't communicate people get their noses put out of joints you have to feel like you're including even if you're not necessarily going to implement what they're going to say but you have to listen to them because their ideas could be better it could be worse in most in most cases, they may not be right because they haven't understood what you, you're trying to do. So maybe you need to communicate clearly. Communication really is one of the core aspects of creating a culture. So how do you actually create a culture? Well, it's got to start from the top down. It come, The fish rots from the head down, but also it grows from the head down. I think that must be a term. No. Hey, but you, you get the principle. It actually comes from the top down. You can't create a culture from the bottom up. You can't create a culture from the middle and span it out. It has to come from the top. It has to say, look, this is what we believe in. This is what we stand for. And then empower the managers, empower the, the middle, the senior management to be able to filter that filter that down. Without top-level buy-in, it will only either last for a short period of time or they won't understand. You have to be able to get the top-level buy-in. And it starts from new hires as well. You have to, when new hires come in, you have to set expectations on not just what you expect from them, but what they should expect from you. Because that helps keep you there. Because if you've said, oh, this is what, what, what you should expect from us, and you don't deliver on that, that's your fault. It's like consistency with creating content stuff. You have to be consistent with your culture. If you're not consistent with your culture, you're not really doing it right. 
You also have to train people as well. Constant training. This is from top right the way, top down, bottom up. I don't mind which way you do it. But you have to actually train people. These are thing with things like soft skills. So actually they can negotiate, so they can listen to other people, so they can take ideas on board. People aren't always born good managers, but people can be good managers with training. And yes, there are people who will argue that you can't manage in a training room, and that's fine. But actually, they can help you understand your style, your role, um, how you interact with different people, how you balance situations up, how you con- resolve conflict. These things actually really can be taught, and they can make people better managers and leaders. And that helps make the culture better, because as soon as someone doesn't like someone in thing because they're being a dictator, they haven't communicated, they're not being honest or being clear, they're lacking collaboration, how do you turn some of that stuff round? It's really important. And the final thing to order to make how to create a, a create a culture is to simply communicate. Now, it doesn't matter necessarily what way you do this. Apart from it being Chinese whispers, you need to come through with some sort of official channel, whether you're big enough to have an internal marketing team or internal marketing individual, whether it comes directly from the CEO and he emails all employees. These are the sort of things that show that the, imp- the CEO is not out of touch. It's really, really important that you communicate as much as possible. That communication in itself is a huge, huge way of creating a culture in a business. Now, quickly to wrap this up, I want to talk about how do you measure. Now, people will say, oh, I'm spending time and this effort on creating a culture, but what's the ROI? Now, there isn't a direct ROI. It, it, it's pretty indirect. Um, people will say that you need to be able to measure everything. I, I don't know if you can put pounds and pence on this and versus a pound and pence income. Yes, you probably attribute how much time is spent on trying to create a culture, but ultimately it's not going to be that accurate. But you can do things like surveys. You can generally watch morale. You can measure things like staff turnover, staff ab- absenteeism. So if you start creating these, and it will take time, but actually these are some ways in which you could potentially measure, actually, if there is a stark drop in absenteeism, is it because people are enjoying more? Because when people enjoy their job, they come in. When people don't enjoy their job, you know what, they go off sick more. Staff turnover is quite high, then why is that? Is that because of me? Is it because of the culture? What are the real reasons behind the staff turnover? It's really interesting to see, and I I I find that creating a culture is fascinating. So thank you very much for listening. Please do check out the podcast uh, the rest of the podcast, so we've got 70, God, 73, four episodes, crikey Moses, that's a lot of episodes, and Monday's episode, Monday's episode is just going to be me, and that's going to be a wrap-up episode of the f- what, what we've learned in the first 75 episodes of the podcast, I still feel crazy saying that, um, and also then, if you, are in- if you have been enjoying the podcast so far, Please do leave a review on iTunes. I really, really do appreciate it. We're up to like 12 now, which is really cool. We're getting there. We're getting there. So anyone else who could leave a review, that would be incredible. So thank you so, so much for listening. And I'll be back on, oh yeah, Monday with this wrap-up episode. Goodbye. This podcast is part of the You Are The Media Network.